Ready to start your journey? Whether it's your first workout or you are a seasoned athlete, Endurance for Everyone Coaching wants to work with you. Our coaching team has worked with athletes from beginners to USAT national qualifiers and are comprised of experienced runners, cyclists, and triathletes who have a passion for healthy living and have been where you are. We offer comprehensive coaching programs from weekly support to basic consultation, all designed to help you achieve your goals. If you want to take your performance to the next level, look no further than Endurance for Everyone Coaching. Go to www.teame4e.com and click on the coaching link or send an email to teame4e at enduranceforeveryone.com. And let's get started. Welcome to this week's Endurance for Everyone podcast. The following program is for entertainment purposes only. Though the hosts of this show are certified Ironman coaches, their attempts at long course triathlons and endurance events should not be taken as an endorsement for you to do something stupid too. You should make your own bad decisions, then podcast about it. Now, let's start the show. Hey, this is John Harris. And this is Rob Bozovich. And Endurance is for Everyone, and this is the Endurance for Everyone podcast. Episode 147 of the Endurance for Everyone podcast. This is John down here in Tampa, and as always, up there in Pennsylvania, who's with me? Rob Bozovich. Rob Bozovich. I'm I'm doing fantastic. Fantastic. That's that's like two (laughs) steps above Ducky. That's like Ducky (laughs) times five. That's just, it's all just Ducky. (laughs) <laughs> oh man it's it's been hot 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 has it how's it up there hot 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 hot, hot, hot. hot. it just seems like just uh just like a week ago we were com- you were complaining how cold it was remember it happens it got, yeah i mean that got hot there was quick. a thing and i wanted to use i wanted to steal the joke and I, and i never got to work it in because it did um it just worked it happens, and that's it. And up here in Pennsylvania, there's a meme going around that says, "Man, I can't wait for summer. I hope it falls on a weekend." <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it it's like we pretty much skipped spring. We went straight from you know, ice to very hot. So yeah, it's you know, it's always that type of joke. I always say that we have two seasons. We have summer, and we have January twelfth. Yeah, right. You know, there, that's in Pennsylvania. It's uh, we we have you know winter and road construction. <laughs> Oh my god. They got to yeah, they got to make room. They got to move the orange barrels out to get the salt in. So, you know. Well, you know, I mean, it's always hot in Florida, but you know, what the difference is is that it's hot everywhere now. I mean, even northeast everywhere is hot. So Yeah, there's no escaping it. You, you, just, you yeah, know. but you, you mean you hear people, I mean, you follow social media as much as I do, no probably less than I do, but or like a hundredth um, of what you do. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> let's go with it. Go ahead, um John. hey, it's part of the job, man. Um everybody's complaining about the heat and um just you know when you get into the water i mean it's always warm here but when you get into a lake and the lake is 85 degrees that's yeah. it's, it's warm yeah so 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 we decided we were talking about this before we decided we were going to do a show just about heat right sure let's call it the heat is on how about that? The heat is on. The heat I, is I told, on. I, I, you didn't listen to last week's episode because I told everybody we're going to call it "Bringing the Heat." Oh, okay, same thing. <laughs> I did. I did. I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> Bringing the heat. It stuck with the you heat so well. is on. Well, it had the word "heat" in it, right? There you go. So yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about you know, one you know why why does it feel so bad when you do run in the heat. You know, why you feel so bad, what, what, what's going on there, basically. And then I want to answer the question, um, is training in the heat good for you? Mm-hmm. Because we always get that question. We always get that answer from um, our fellow listeners up there in your area about how much better it is to run in the cool weather. Mm-hmm. But there's there's something to be said about heat training. So. I, I'm sitting in my wife's law office. So yeah. being that we aren't dropping the science right now, should we say... Allegedly, <laughs> well, there is science to back this up. Oh, and, uh, I, and uh, I have it. Spoiler. <laughs> Allegedly, 
and um, and then we're going to go into uh, um, you're going to take over a little bit and, and go into some of the other stuff about some tips on training in the heat and um, a few other things that we talked about. Yeah, that's so. what I'm covering this show. Do you remember what we covered in the prior show so we can say what people missed in case they're tuning in for the first time? I don't have an idea. <laughs> I'm, old. I'm, old. I'm, old. I'm old, man. I don't remember anything. On last week's show, I would say last week, once again, no sprint episodes there last was, week. There was no... We lost power, so it's yes. just me, good old Rob up here trying to having a have a two-way conversation with himself. So I was just staring in the mirror, recapped uh, my triathlon down in Harrisburg, the yep. Catfish Triathlon, and well as well as working out with uh, November Project up in Boston. So that was last week's show. If you missed it and just tuning in, you can go back for that. And uh, as I said, this this or not I said, John just said this week we're going to talk to you about – uh, training, hot. training in the heat, what hot. tips, tools, tactics, you know, hot weather and, and going from there. So we will, t- at the end of the show, tell you what we think we might do next week if we figure out something to do by then. So <laughs> we'll figure it out as we talk. Go on, John, <laughs> take it away. So, so, so as, our, as our resident heat expert. Oh yes. Yeah. You because know, I am in Florida and it's always hot here. Um, so, you know, I did, I did my usual, you know, minimal, um, research and uh so we're just a lot of stuff i do i don't know if you've figured it out rob is off the top of my head which is why i forget things yep. and then i remember it later yep but, um I, i'm a busy guy you know just so so busy john i know so uh so let's start with this i mean basically why why would you say it feels awful when you train in the heat why why is that do you think do you have any idea there actually yeah. is a physiological thing going on that makes you feel like that uh, well, okay. Do I want to give? Do you want the what Rob thinks is an athlete, or also do, do you yeah. also want the what minimal research I see to see if it matches up with yours? Yeah, I want to. I want to know what you why you think it is as an athlete. So, the the answer is sh- shortly, and it sounds weird. Okay, I and this is personally, I don't like. Okay, if I'm laying in bed. And like, but like my wife breathes on me, like the hot air. Like I, I don't, I don't like that. I, I personally feel short of breath. Like I feel like okay. I'm suffocating. Right. Okay. And that's just a weird little pet pee, but that carries through for everything. So for me, like I can't, like, it sounds so weird. Like I can't put like a, like a blanket or a sheet over my head. Like the hot air, I start, I'm not saying hyperventilate. I don't get that crazy with it. That's me personally. I don't like that. That being said is I do like the heat if it's low humidity and that comes back around with some of this research i've done you know the humidity is what really gets me and i think that's the same deal with whenever you put the sheet over your head you're I'm creating a little extra humidity there and same thing with the hot breath like it's it all comes back to i like nothing more if, if i could be running and be hot like when i say 90 plus degrees the, the, the actual heat on my body does not bother me if I can get a really cool breath of air, like a nice, good, deep, you know, into my mouth, lungs and so forth. I gotcha. But I just, it just, it's, I don't know how to describe it. And if, if you know, if somebody out there gets it, they get it. And if they don't, they don't, that's me. And so as such, I don't necessarily know if there's any science behind the oxygen levels in the air and, and, you know, if heat has something to do with it. I do know that humidity plays a large portion in your body cooling and this is stolen directly from one of Vinny, and I don't want to get the the stat wrong, but I'll just say Vinny Tordrich is one of his last two or three shows. He he talks. He he would know the actual number. You look. You perspire a lot just through your breathing, and that's why I think the humidity plays a large portion in what causes me to have some problems with it. Is your body's trying to cool down, just like a. That's why a dog pants. Right. And if and if I if the air is already so humid, it can't take the it can't take it from me, and and I'm and therefore not cooling effectively. That's my best okay. guess. Tying a little so, bit of research without sitting on my desk. You're on. getting you're getting dangerously close to it. <laughs> okay. So I'll stop then and say so, take it away. So I'll say so the physiological and it's just this is what your body is doing. So. The body's trying to cool itself down, mm-hmm. basically, when you're you're out there hot. So your body sends, like, more blood to circulate through the skin, mm-hmm. which is going to try to get the heat away from your skin. This leaves, But this leaves, of course, if the blood's all being sent to your skin, where is it not being sent to? Everywhere your, else. Your muscles. 
And what are you doing? You're running. So, so you're, you made you're, me think of a joke that I want to interject. <laughs> I'll tell you much later. Go on. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, can, I can almost guess where that's going. So your but all your blood's being sent. Let me just let me surmise to say <laughs> a very wise man uh, told me that 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 your body's designed with enough blood to run your brain and something you can only run one at a time. Right, exactly. Think, right. think it through. <laughs> so your body basically is trying to cool itself down, so it's shooting all this blood to your skin uh, to try to into your blood to get to try to dissipate this heat somehow. So it's going away from your muscles, which of course now increases your heart rate. Mm-hmm. So if the humidity is also high, your body face you, your your body faces added stress because sweat doesn't you know readily evaporate from your skin because it's humid high humidity. Mm-hmm. This is going to push your body temperature even higher. Yep. So you will balk, and that's why it feels miserable. I mean, luckily the body has this self defense mechanism that makes you feel like crap long before you're gonna like drop. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully you're listening to your body while you're running and you stop on time. I had one client actually text me and said, look, I, I feel awful out here. And I, I told him that you need to just stop, stop, get yeah. somewhere, get, get in the cool, get in the shade somewhere yeah, and just stop. Don't try to push through that. Your body's telling you that for a reason. Yeah. So, um, so training in the heat's uncomfortable. So, but it, you know, it, it slows you down and plus, you know, so if it's, if you're, if you're uncomfortable and it's slowing you down, uh, so then it must not be giving you good training, right? Uh, arguably, <laughs> I assume that you've got some science to back this up, John. Wrong. <laughs> it actually, there was actually a study. So I, here's my science. There's actually a study. The guy's name was Santiago Lorenzo and he was at the university of Oregon in 2010. He took 20 cyclists. And he, uh, so he had, he had to complete a performance test in, uh, in temperate conditions on two occasions separated by 10 days, uh, 12 of the 20, he put in a situation where it was over a hundred degrees and the other eight he put in you know, like normal 55 degrees at training. Okay. So when he swapped them around the, the 12, the, the cyclists who underwent the heat acclimatization, acclimatization, see, I can't say that word acclimatization can't you say when they were used to it yeah when they were used to it i'm trying to be scientific here okay all right (laughs) uh the ones that went on when the ones that got used to it improved their performance in the cool performance test by six percent and additionally their vo2 max and their power output at lactic threshold increased by five percent what about the ones that were training at 55 degrees what do you think happened did they now forgive me? So they one group trained hot re, and trained hot. went cold. Yep. The other group trained cold, went cold, and stayed cold. Stayed cold. Yep. I'm 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 gonna say probably saw some improvement, but minimal five percent. No, zero. <laughs> zero. Zero percent well, improvement. Well, that's minimal. That's that's minimal improvement, right? So there was a zero improvement. So there is science behind the fact that if you train in hot weather. You will get better. And now this goes back to, if you remember last year, I went up to Runner's World and had an outstanding race. Best yep. ever. Best ever 10K. And everybody was saying, remember, it well, it's, you did train, but yes, you trained all through the summer, but it was also 50 degrees. Yeah. And I'm not used to running in 50 degrees. It never gets to 50 degrees here. Very rarely. In the so, fridge. Yeah. Not even. The, um, so... That goes that goes along with this. Here I am training all through the summer in the heat in Florida. I go up to Runner's World in Pennsylvania, and I you know I have the best race I've ever had. So there's some truth to that. Yeah. Uh, N equal one's ex- experiment shows that there is truth to this. Right. So yes. But the 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 point is is that you can't do it all the time. So, so when somebody trains at like, I'm, I'm thinking of triathletes that train at sea level, then go to Colorado and do act, you know, do the, uh, the high altitude training. Okay. They don't train in high altitude all the time. They'll no. go out there for like 10 days, two weeks and they'll train and then they'll go back to the flatlands, you know, down to sea level again. Right. So the science is saying that that's what you really should be doing is like, you should be training like you normally do and then throwing in some heat stuff a couple weeks 
to kind of, especially right before a cooler weather race. Now, what's the problem with that, Rob? <laughs> well, I'm I'm going to go with because we had talked a little pre-roll on this, <laughs> and that is, so you can't it, depending on where you live, you may not have that option. Right. It, it might be. I mean, if you're in Maine, you're going to have a much different temperature than Florida. Right. So. One of my pet peeves is like, you know, someone's saying, okay, if you're going to run the hills, well, you got to run the hills if you're going to run in the hills. Well, there are yeah. no hills here. Right. So tell me what I can do. Don't yeah. tell me I have to do this because I can't do it. So tell me right. what I need to do. So if you're telling me, like in this one article I read, said that you should very rarely train in anything above 90 degrees and even more rare train in anything above 100 degrees. So you can That's train. That's every day here. <laughs> four or five days a week or a year, I should say. Yeah, that's every day here, you know, so yeah. don't tell me I can't do it. Tell me how I can. Right. Right. So, I mean, thinking of it as a logical person, this is, wasn't in the article. I'm thinking, well, okay, you're not supposed to train in 90 degrees. I supposed to train a hundred degrees. So what you do is you train shorter, maybe a little bit more, you know, instead of like the long 20, 50, you know, hundred mile rides or runs or whatever, you're doing more hour-long runs or hour-long rides and at a more tense level and then stopping. Yeah. Um, another thing that that I thought of is like, okay, well, you know, everybody knows it's, it's uh, boring to run loops, but actually that's a safer thing to do mm -hmm. because that gives you an out. So if you're running like a, maybe a five-mile loop, at least you know every five miles you're going by your house or you're going by your car or something. Right. So you're never more than five miles away from getting out of it. Right. If something happens. What I do, and, and I guess I'm going to start uh, talking a little more and throwing in some interjections here. And that what I'll do, like when I leave my house, and this could work uh, when I say, well, for, I'm going to say your neighborhood, John, I don't know where you live at all. Okay. But I'm going to, I don't, and I don't even want to say a typical Florida neighborhood, but like I could say, look, my dad's place in the villages, there's a lot of like little, developments you have a couple little cul-de-sacs but a lot of little streets you know most towns are set up either a that way or b like a grid which works perfectly well perfect the same way okay and let's just assume it's a grid yours isn't i, I you know that i'm talking like new york or boston or these old cities that were set up that way okay it's simple you know in that case all you do is you go maybe out and then you just keep working in a, like a little spiral pattern you know what I mean? If you want a different route road and you just keep, you can, when I say not necessarily zigzagging, you don't got to cross your same path. You don't got to do the same loop, but that's what I do when I leave my house. I run to this neighborhood across and then there, you know, literally I hang a left and I go as far to that street until it, when I say it runs out, you know, east to west, then I'll, you know, run north to south to the next one and then come back. So I'm only a block over and, and those are about a half a mile, three quarters of a mile, the way that the, the they are. But for, from my house, I'm only ever, you know what I mean, a quarter mile from there. Yeah. So if the worst were to happen, I come a quarter mile back over to my house, but it, you know, then I just do this left, right, zigzag out and back. And if you look, you'll see that how I do that, you know, and then when I say strategically, once I know I'm feeling good, I'll go out into this little sub development. And, you know, once again, it, I used to live in that one. And if you do, there's four roads in a loop around and you do all of them, it's exactly a mile. At that point, when I say that's the farthest I am from my house, I'm only a mile away. You know, mm -hmm. so on really hot days, that's what I tend to do. But I also tend to do it for the second reason is that I know which streets I could hit early in the morning, which streets I can hit late at night to catch the sun and know where the where the shade's going to be. Right. You know, and that's that's one of the things. And I guess I'll start jumping in with some some of the tips, and we'll, we'll go through a rundown at the end. You know. One of yeah. the main tips comes up on everything you read says, find the shade, you know, find and it's just a matter yep. of if you're fine, if you're running, if you, if you're, uh, this isn't a track round and around and around, like we're talking about, you know, this is just your general neighborhood running. You can figure it out where you can get a loop that's going to put you back by your car, by your house, by something. And it, when you run it, I'm not saying every single day, but if you run it once a week, once every other week, you're going to start knowing, you know, the, the, the best, the shady spots, or if you have an opportunity, maybe a place that you could, you know, on drive in, hide a bottle and then go park your car. And that gives you two points of access to water yeah. or hydration. 
Yeah, it's it. I mean, it takes a little bit of a plan, and you know, especially when you're running in such hot weather, it mm-hmm. you need you need some forethought. You need to think it out a little bit. Um, you know, we had uh, one person went out and ran uh, the wilderness trail Saturday, and it was hot. And it was also we're having you know thunderstorms daily here now, of course, yeah. because of the heat and nasty ones. You know, so you have to be. Trail runs are a totally different thing, not totally different, but you know what? Um, it even takes a little bit more planning because there really is no way you're out in the woods. You're out in the woods. Yes. You know, there's not going to be, you know, uh, if you're on a, a local trail or a local like running trail or bike trail or a Claremont or something like that where there's people everywhere, you go out to Croom, there's nobody out there. There could be, you could, you could be out there for hours and not see a soul. Yeah, and this so, is not in our, I'm going to say, our tips and tricks section, but this no. is just what I, one of the things I've covered in my, in a previous show about finding trails and running them, mm-hmm. like state parks, they're going to have maps. And this is just, this goes back to that movie, 100 and what is it, 87 something or whatever, you know, and that is, you know, the guy that goes out hiking and doesn't say, tell anyone where he's going and gets trapped under the boulder and has oh, cut his own arm off. 127 like, we don't days, want you, yeah. Yeah, we don't, what would you say? 127 days. No, he wasn't out there that long. That was a hundred. That's the name of the movie. One hundred twenty-seven days. Uh, I think we need to Google it, John. I'm, I'll Google it right now. It's it's hours, John. He he would die. Oh, one hundred twenty-seven hours. I'm just you're he right. He would die with no you're right, water. You're right. You're right. You're right. I read, it, I, I, and I, I don't want to get the, the guy's name wrong, but I, I listened to the audio book as from that guy, and it's a great listen, by the way. Anyways, the point of saying all this is, it's um. You know, you got to tell somebody where you're going, you know, and that's the deal. Like my wife and I, when I go out, I'll tell her like, I'm running roughly this loop. She starts to zone out. So I got to make it quick, you know, get to the point. And I say, I'm running roughly this loop. I should be back. You know, all goes well an hour. If I, if you don't see me in an hour and a half, start calling me, you know what I mean? Like something's wrong, you know, and just to get, so that way you want to make sure you have uh, somebody who knows where you're going, roughly what you're doing. And, you know, and, and like I said, is if you're going to be going to like a state park or something or that somewhere you haven't been, go online or go to their park office and find they'll have trail maps. That way, you know, you, I'm not saying you have to take it with you, but get yourself a little familiar with what you're going to be doing out right. there. Don't you, just go on a whim. Do you use road ID? I yes and no. I have one. But I use it while racing, yeah, but okay. I don't use it while I'm out like at home. I will wear it if I'm out somewhere else you know what i mean okay. like when i go like, I, I wear I'm, mine all the time that's yeah i wear it all the time but i should go to the... I, what i did is i, I it came mine came with two bands mine came with the, the the when i say the standard band like a watch band if you will it also came with a triathlon band mm-hmm. so i pulled the tag off and put it on so i use it for it's in my race bag i need to take it off my race bag or out of my race bag and put the little tag back on the other one yeah or get get a second one or but, get a second one yeah um, yep. the reason I bring it up is on their app. If you put your app, their app on the phone, there's a, there's a, a feature in it called breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. And if you turn that on while you say you go to a trail, you go somewhere you're not really familiar with, you turn that on and stick it back in your pocket. If you stop moving for more, you can set it. But I think the minimum is like five minutes. If you yeah. stop moving, it automatically alerts your emergency contact. That's pretty cool. It, know it's that. very, very cool. And it's it's yeah. a great thing to have when you think of it, if, especially if you're by yourself. That's that's what you need. It's like it's a so say, you know, uh, uh, Jennifer's out there on her own. She, she puts me on there and, uh, you know, she stops moving for 10 minutes. It's going to call me. Yeah. OK, Jennifer or her mom or somebody or, you know, anybody. Right. Yep, yep. So it it's a great little feature. And you know, I highly recommend putting it on your phone, especially if you do a lot of you know, the trail runners who go out there in the woods by themselves. Now, as, my only, we I guess this is this, I we don't need to deviate down. My only question would be, I got a lot of areas up here. John, when I drop down into some of these, when I say canyons, okay, I drop down in far enough into some places where I don't uh, have satellite. Yeah, yeah, that's I don't have satellite thing. radio. I, there's no cell phone. If I drop out of cell phone coverage, do, how does it, how does that work? Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I assume that would be Otherwise, part of Otherwise, all kind of people are going to be getting alerted. <laughs> well, I, I wonder if it's on a gar- if it's on the Garmin devices. I know there's something that you can uh, do a track your workout, and you can follow somebody. Like if I turn it on, you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, but I don't I've know if there's that, an automatic alert. I've turned that off at some point uh, because my phone battery was pretty poor. I've had my phone battery replaced. 
Um, but another function too, when I say get to know your device, your Garmin, most of the Garmin devices, um, you'll have a screen and if nothing else, it'll say you'll have a back to start, which is when I say a basic navigation, yeah. it just gives you an arrow, but Track that's back, not, yeah. it's not turn right, turn left. It's just an arrow that tells you as the crow flies. Like, so if you were to get lost, which doesn't help you if you you're hurt, but just a way that if you get <laughs> lost, you at least know you can get home if you have that function on your, on your device. Well, that, but, but talk about safety. I mean, we're going down a safety thing, but, um, especially out in Chrome, there is, if you don't have a, like AT&T or Verizon, you're not going to have a signal out there. Yeah. So, so you're out there alone. You don't even have a phone now. Yeah. So the, not, not, the smartest thing to go running but i'm looking at the e crumb thing on on road idea and it's like you know going for a run it sends a message going for a run you start it um if i stopped for uh two minutes mindset for which i should need to change that i guess but it would call nancy yeah so that's how i have it set right now hmm. um but normally she's running with me so <laughs> so she's she's gonna got call. It. hey he's over there five feet um I see him. yeah uh, the other thing, and we're, this kind of gets into what you're going to talk about, I know, is um, is people have the idea that, um, and no, hydration is very important. I'm not going to say it's not important, but don't expect drinking water is going to cool you down. It's very limited, very limited in that aspect. It's going to keep you hydrated, but it's not going to cool you. So once that temperature gets high, once your body temperature gets high, it's it's going to be there. So you need to like. And I love, I love this one. The one article I pulled it said to take ice with you. Okay, how long do you think that's going to last? R- really, that 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 was an actual thing on Active. dot com. Take ice with you. Well, you okay. know. Okay. <laughs> or just turn turn the thermostat down. You know. Well, I tell you, I I thought I thought I went for a ride uh, Sunday with Jen and Michael, and uh, um, I thought the night before I said I'm going to freeze one of my water bottles. Mm-hmm. You know, and. You know how long it took it for it to to, to melt? Maybe twenty minutes. Uh, depending 20 on the heat, minutes. anywhere between uh, twenty minutes and an hour. <laughs> twenty yeah. minutes, it was gone. It was melted. Yeah. So I mean, it doesn't even work. So I don't, I don't know how you're going to bring ice with you, but anyway. So um, so what we want to talk about now is kind of like some tips. You know, everybody's training in the heat now. So what are some tips to to do that? I guess is a way to segue. Such a smooth segue. Are you are you teeing me up here, I'm John? I'm teeing you up. I'm throwing you the softball. Okay, here goes. So so, uh, and I'm gonna change tactics a little bit, and I'm gonna go through, and I'm I'm gonna do when I say, I literally I, I did a little bit of research, guys. Okay, there, everything's a little different. I'm gonna go down a couple of different off rabbit holes here, and they're gonna make some sense. Okay, but I want I just want everyone to uh, kind of follow my train of thought on this. I want to give you the info. I'll recap it at the end, but. It's the whole uh, when I say the Jerry Maguire, show me the money. Okay, if you put stuff into Google, you're gonna get results. They're gonna be sponsored. Follow the money. Okay, so scrubbing uh, brands out of this, I'm gonna give you just some tips and tactics, like the best lists that I, uh, list I should say that I can come up with, and then I'm gonna go a little farther into it. Uh, okay, so this will actually be Rob reading for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Run at the coolest time of the day, which is usually just before sunrise. Avoid running during the middle of the day, usually the hottest time. Plan a shady route and or routes with water fountains. Wear loose-fitting, light-colored colored tech clothing that wicks sweat away and dries quickly. Consume adequate amount of water and sports drink. Avoid getting sunburn because uh, injured skin loses its ability to sweat, making cooling less efficient. Examine any medications you're taking because it can increase your sensitivity to heat. Slow your pace. Adjust for humid and, uh, heat and humidity. Run by feel or perceived exertion level rather than pace. Uh, if a run feels hard, it is hard regardless of the actual pace. Last tip on there, it's fine to use a treadmill on uh, for some runs when the weather is really bad. Running two or three times outdoors uh, a week is enough to keep you heat acclimated. All right. So I wanted to read that list, and I wanted to go through a few things. And and I'm going to go straight to a this bothers Rob 
for this re for this reason. It's not sorry, Pete. It's not necessarily a Rob's rant, and I'm not a numbers guy. Okay, right. so for the fact that I can find some of these numbers, um, that's just when I say they're right there. People choose to ignore them. Okay, gotcha. If you go right now and hey, play along, go to Google, put in training or running in heat, running in hot weather, and is some variations of that. You will quickly, in about 0.4 seconds, according to Google, get 399 million – okay, repeat that – 399 million results. The top four or five that are going to come up, through, for me at least it was, and, and I did it several times, keywords, and it always brings you back to the same ones. Runner's World article because they have a lot of information, but the number one – that comes up, that always redirect me back to RRCA, Roadrunner Club of America, hot weather running trips. It's a pretty, it seems like a pretty legitimate club or group that tells you how to do things. As, as you're it's, talking, I'm going to tell you, I just Googled it and I'm seeing exactly what you're saying. Yeah. So their number one tip, number one, reading it right off because I printed it. Avoid dehydration, <laughs> exclamation With point. Exclamation point, dot, dot, dot. You can lose between 6 and 12 ounces of fluid for every 20 minutes of running. Therefore, it is important to prehydrate. 10 to 15 ounces of fluid, 10 to 15 minutes prior to running. Drink fluids every 20 to 30 minutes along your running route. Uh, to determine if you're hydrating properly, weigh yourself before and after. You should have drunk one pint of fluid for every pound you're missing. Indications that you're running uh, while dehydrated are persistent elevated pulse after finishing your run, dark yellow urine. Keep in mind that thirst is not an adequate indicator of dehydration. Their number two tip, visit Gatorade Endurance's site. <laughs> you will find great tools for developing hydration strategy. Now, Amazing how that I'm works, stopping, right? <laughs> I'm stopping right here. I'm diving in like a little bit of a Rob's rant and and, and numbers because this really gets to me. Get them, Rob. But then I'm going to come back to why this isn't bad information, folks, okay? But you got to take a lot of stuff with a grain of salt. And then I'm, once again, I said I'm going to recap it at the end or with back with like the, the, the takeaways. I, on see, it, okay? I see what you did there with the grain of salt, though. I like that. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Boom. So... What's, let's just run through some numbers, and this is just – I don't even need to tee it up. You know that I'm probably going to be a little unhappy with Gatorade right now, and, and, and the fact of the matter is some people love it. Some people love to drink it because let's, let's face it. It does taste yummy, okay? A regular Gatorade, regular original formula, has nine teaspoons of sugar in it on a 20-ounce serving. So that's 135 calories of uh, – of sugar that you would be consuming if you were to take that. Let's take it a, a step farther. I'm going to say it this way. They have G2, which is lower sugar. They also then have, um, you know, they're now, if you go right to their website as we speak, they have zero sugar. It actually says zero sugar on it, okay? Fifth or tenth ingredient, I forget. It's right there. There's only about maybe 15 ingredients on it is, uh, I want to say, uh, I don't want to mispronounce it. I should have it in front of me, sucralose. It's when you click on it, it says, "Hey, this is made from uh, Splenda." Yeah. It's made from Splenda. It's on the front. It says no sugar. On the ingredient list, it says sugar. And to know see it's sugar. That ain't right. Yeah. So let me go to what a lot of you folks went and and here's why. Like this, this when I say bothersome, but we're gonna get there, okay? On their website right now, their Gatorade Endurance. Which John, I know Randy was a kind of a fan of a little bit, and and I get, and there's a whole separate thing if you're taking this, and I'm using air quotes as nutrition. This is not nutrition advice. I'm not a doctor, but this is where when I say, once again, follow the money and pay attention to it. Right on their website, it says formulated for farther. That's on the endurance tab. It's a nice little nice little uh, um, slogan there, right? Sounds great, right? Yeah. Nearly two times the sodium, 300 milligrams, and three times the potassium, 140 milligrams, dot, 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 of traditional Gatorade. They just kind of slide that in. So once again, when they're telling you how great it is and how it has so much more stuff, they only compare it to their stuff. It's an arbitrary number that they're making up, and they're, they're telling you, okay? Right. So the next thing. And this is the watermelon flavor, if that makes a difference. Once again, it's right on the website. You click on it. It's the first one that comes up. 
their website. This isn't like it isn't like I'm going to a gotcha site, okay? Right. It says 20 grams of carbs, a uh, carbohydrates, energy that's easy to take down uh, for distance training and racing. Here's why I'm bringing this up, and I'm, I, I even asked John if I should go brand specific on this or just say a top, you know, hydration. And you knew what my re- answer would be to that. Just go for yeah, it. Hell yeah, I'll tell them. The top five things that they sponsor, and they even tote it that they're the encore sponsor, the entire rock and roll series. Everybody who goes in this rock and roll half or full marathon, this is their encore hydration. Yep. The Chicago Marathon, which I'm doing later in the year. Ironman U.S. series. So every Ironman in across the, US. the country yep. in the U.S. Yes. The TCS New York City Marathon. I've done that one. BAA, Boston Athletic Association, official sponsor for the Boston Marathon. So they're, they're toting it, and, and a lot of people will train with this. And if you use it and you like it, good, okay? But here's – Here's the other side of the whole thing that they're not telling you, okay, because they're telling you it's good because it has this. It's good because it has that. A 12-ounce serving of of the Gatorade Endurance formula has 90 calories. That's not too bad, right? They, they, they're they going to tell you – you go through the ingredient list. It has 300 milligrams of sodium, 140 potassium. They already said that up above. They have 22 grams of carbohydrates of which 13 come from sugar. You're going to get 2% of your daily intake of calcium. You're going to get 0% of your daily intake of magnesium. Why did I target those numbers? Well, those are the numbers they gave you. That's right on there, and that's what they're telling you is important. Number one, one of the number one candy bars. Yes, this is exactly where I'm going, folks. One of the number one candy bars in the United States currently. Go to their website. I won't tell you which one it is. Let's just say it satisfies, okay? (laughs) Okay. You're gonna have and it has peanuts in it. <laughs> yes, you're gonna have 250 calories from that. Yep. You are gonna get 120 milligrams of sodium. So you're gonna get about half of the sodium that you're gonna get in this specialized sports drink. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get 23 total grams of carbohydrates, of which you're gonna have 27 grams of sugar. You're gonna get about twice as much sugar as you're gonna get from the Gatorade, but you're gonna get four percent of your calcium. So if you were to double the Gatorade in order to get the same amount of calcium, okay, you're going to then have the same amount of sugar in the Gatorade as you have in the number one leading candy bar, and you're going to have 180 calories, which isn't that far off from the 250 in the candy bar. Right. So they're telling you to take this to take it for the – the, the carbohydrates, not the carbohydrate, that's a different thing. They're telling to take you for the electrolytes to replenish, and they, they want you to take this, and it's good for you and all that stuff, right? Okay? Mm. One, and, 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 and there's, 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 there's could be 10 different ones. I actually talked to a company founder for about five minutes today. Just so I didn't want to say this without having it, okay? Mm. If you want to get sodium, you want to get the same amount of sodium, you want to get the same amount of potassium, but you're also going to get then uh, more. You're going to get more calcium. You're going to get 5% in one capsule, which you know, okay, of of this, which they rec- they would recommend taking multiples. And we're going to get back into a tips and tool section off of Rob's rant here in a minute, okay? <laughs> I'm but enjoying, you're gonna get, I'm enjoying you're thinking, the hell out of this. You're going to get 5% of your calcium in one capsule, as opposed to you know uh, 2% in one serving of of Gatorade. Mm-hmm. You're also going to get magnesium and mang- and manganese, which are all good for you in one capsule. Of a, of a leading salt replacement made for endurance people, okay, mm-hmm. zero calories. Exactly. Zero. So the, – and, and, and this, this, this sounds like Rob is really against the whole sugar, don't drink Gatorade thing here. Make your own determination if it's right for you and if you're using it for fueling and for – okay? But you can see why because the average runner goes out uh, at runner jogger – a rule of thumb is you're going to burn 100 calories for every mile that you run, okay? That's you might be you might burn more, you might burn less. But if you go out and run 5 miles and burn 500 calories, if you drink a 32 ounce Gatorade, you're probably going to be taking in more than that. You know, you're 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 going to swig it down all the cal- if you're doing this for weight loss and you think that's the best thing in the world, this is not the way to do it. 
and you're not getting anywhere near the correct amount of when I say correct amount, you're not you, you can get a whole lot more if you take a um a, a specialized salt or electrolyte pill is the best way to say it. And there, there's a bunch of them out there. I'm not directing you to one or not or, or not away from one. And, but the real reason, like legitimately, I didn't even share this with, with John. The reason I'm so passionate about this, when I was a kid, we went hiking for not hiking. We were camping for like three, four days, okay, down at Ohio Pow. We were, we were camping, riding bikes, hiking, swimming, you're doing everything. And back then, this is 25, 30 years ago, it's drink water, drink water, drink water, drink water. Well, we were drinking a whole lot of water, okay? Mm -hmm. One of the things we weren't doing was taking in electrolytes. We weren't replenishing anything. So, you, you know, you could do it multiple ways, but here's just where I'm going with it. We come back, my dad gets, my, or we're there, my dad's just getting a headache, pops a couple of, I'll leave ibuprofen, add Tylenol, I don't know what he pops, right? Takes a couple of them, drinks some more water, headache gets a little worse, takes a little more, takes a little more. Week later, he has to go in for brain surgery. His brain was bleeding because he, we, we literally, we drank so much water, he washed the electrolytes out, something caused a little bit of a bleed, which started causing intracranial pressure, he started having a, a freaking headache, took a pill, which thins your blood to make more blood rush to it faster, and then, you know, it literally, when I say this way, he's fine, he went in for, he still has the scars on the back of his head, like in from his ears, where they had to go in, shave his head, literally drill a hole, blood drains out, drill a hole. So it's like basically releasing the pressure? Release the pressure. Yeah. He's fine. Headache instantly goes away. They still don't. When I say no, what caused it? It's not like he fell or, or injured or whatever. Drinking a lot of water is not necessarily the answer. But on the opposite end of it, if you're tr trying to replace electrolytes, um, pretty much according to this, a snick, uh, 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 a uh, beep that out there. You know I mean a leading candy bar is going to give you just as much <laughs> as the sports drink that is designed for this. Okay. Right. So guys follow the money. If the, if 399 million results come up and the number two tip on that site says, go to this website, they're trying to sell you something. Yeah. Just because they can buy the top spot doesn't mean it's the best thing for you. And I know, I mean, I mean you've, if people have been listening to us for a while, we've talked about this when we go into the science and we go into anything, we talk like sugar or anything like that. We always tell people to, when you look at a study Look at who funded the study. Look at yeah. who funds. There's a reason out of 399 million entries on Google that, that it's not because Google's selecting them to be first. It's because they paid for it. Yeah. Okay. So the companies, this is why companies like like uh, the, the lower, the, I don't want to say lower companies, but the le least known companies like Tailwind and things like that uh, have a hard time getting known because Gatorade can do this. Yeah. You know, and, and they had the funding to do this. Everybody, you know, if you talk to most trail runners, they're going to tell you use Tailwind. Mm -hmm. They're not going to tell you use Gatorade. Yeah. You know, so um, and, and most triathletes are not going to tell you use you can. They're going to tell you use Tailwind. They're going to all these other things. You know, hell, Propel is better. You can get that at Publix. Mm hmm. You know, so. I, I don't know the validity of that. Statement. Yeah. The like, last time I looked at Propel, I was pretty sure it was owned by like. It's it Coca -Cola is Coca-Cola or something yeah, like that. It, it is, but still. it's it's a, it's a basic. If you just want flavor, mm -hmm. and if you just want you know a quick uh, electrolyte, you know it's cheap and it and you can throw it in water and it's fine and it tastes great, mm -hmm. you know, and it's better than Gatorade. Yeah, for you, you know, I'm not, nothing's you know, it's all bad in in some way, but you know, but it's not throwing. Uh, you know Gatorade, and, and I'll and I've and I, you know, I've been honest with you, Rob, about this. Is I I do use Gatorade on a, on occasion. I use the uh, Gatorade Endurance, the the powder, but because I like the taste, but yeah. I don't use it all the time. Yeah, and, but are you using it exclusively? And are you drinking no. six to twelve ounces for every twenty minutes that oh, you're out there? As no, recommended? no, 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 no. <laughs> no. Yeah. I usually have one bottle with something in it. Now, yesterday I didn't have it at all. I had, you know, I used another product, but. Um, I use Tailwind, but uh, and yeah. I use Scratch, and that you know I've used both of those, and then yeah. I'll have one bottle of plain water that I'll usually put uh, one or two salt. I'll break it up in it, yeah. You know, instead of having to take the pill, and that's something if you don't like taking pills while you're running or biking, you can always break open the tabs, you know, and just put it in the water. Um, right. So it works. It works wonders. So, 
That's mine. So. Yeah, it's it's a it's a pet peeve of mine as well. I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one that rants on here now. But um, that's you know uh, just, I, I keep it, and I, like I said, I just that's one where it's just uh, it's I want to well, say it's so blatant. It's right there, and it, it literally. Anyone I, I find following it, along can find this in 30 seconds. Right. I find it disingenuous. I, I don't like being, I, I kind of, you're not, this is kind of off subject, but I kind of got into it with somebody on LinkedIn of all places the other day because they were touting this uh, management software or this, um, uh, it, it's supposed to like use, if you have Google Mail, it's supposed to go into your mailbox and help you organize it. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'm saying, OK, well, I'll check this out. You know, I'm not the most unorganized person, but, you know, any tool. So I'm going through all these steps, you know, 10 steps. And then it tells you it's, you know, 100 bucks a year. Yeah. That's disingenuous to me. Yeah. You know, because why if it's worth it and I'm saying, well, maybe it is worth 100 bucks a year. <laughs> but if it is worth it and you believe it's worth it, then put it on the front page. Yeah. Why are you making people like not telling it and anything like that? It's just it, it gripes me. Yeah, and it, honestly, even if I wanted to buy it, I wouldn't have bought it at that point because it, it irritates me. It's too much, yeah. you know. So it's like you said, follow the money. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so that's All that's right. my little gripe. I want to circle back around because okay. I promised circle, I was going to circle for a landing. Okay, I guess I'm not a pilot, John. <laughs> it's Sorry, a, it's a it's a it's a song. See, you don't you didn't grow up when I did. You would know that song. Go ahead. Can I uh, can I ask a way off the rail question <laughs> to you uh, and, and and group play along? Group um, play along. I listen and I'll get to uh, and okay, and, and that's all she wrote. Yeah. Saying mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying is that a regional thing or is that like that's a, all she wrote? That's all she wrote. I always, okay. My, no, my my parents said that when I was growing up. Okay, yeah, that's all she wrote. I, I, I like the Clarks. The Clarks, it's a Pittsburgh band, did a cool cover of The River by Springsteen, yeah. and that was here. But I had said that to somebody, and they're like, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm like, I just, I thought everybody knew that. You know what I mean? It's just, that's, that's saying? That's all she wrote. It's in it's in The River, you know, the Bruce Springsteen, you know. Yeah. You know, anyway, it's in the song. And so I said it, and well, somebody, like, somebody looked at me, and I'm like, how do you not know this? So, Well, anyways. you know, but she, it's funny. I mean, she'll, she'll hate that I say that. Nancy and I had that issue all the time. I'll mm-hmm. say something, and she'll say, "What does that mean?" Yeah, I'll say, "You." Well, I can't even I'm, think of one up, but it, I mean, it's happened more than once. They'll say, "I'm from that's Pittsburgh, like a so we saying. say a lot of stuff that nobody says." So, well, I know one thing you say all the time. I don't know if you've caught yourself. You say, Long story "You short. say that being said." <laughs> well, that's said. That being said. <laughs> that being yeah. said, Long, you say. Long that story <laughs> short. Let me circle back around to it, John. <laughs> that being said. Uh, Sorry, John. Thanks, not everyone. You know, it was a great episode. See, now you're, your mother. Now you're when going people to... have an annoying habit, somebody tells somebody, and like they have this sound of glass breaking, and then they're like, "I never noticed that." So, well, now Anyways. you're going to be very conscious of it. Um, Andrew used, yeah, it Andrew is used what to. It is. Yeah, yeah, it is what it is. I'm just um, going to tell her. I've I only said it once in my entire life, and you just consistently edit it back in, John. I, just, I don't know why you do that. I'm just making you do that. Andrew yeah. used to, Andrew used to do that to me when we first started because Andrew, you know, he was a talker. He, mm-hmm. He's a very good speaker, and I had like all these annoying little things I used to do, and he would like point them out all the time. Well, Dude, you got to stop saying this. Everybody, Dude, please saying. comment on the show on Facebook and let us know the things that we do that are annoying so we know to give you more of what you love. Uh, you know, who was it? Who was it? Well, I'm gonna, <laughs> that being said, no, who was it? Um, and I still catch myself doing it. It's like if you say something funny, I'll repeat what you said. Yes. So everything call, I say is funny because you repeat everything. Yeah, it's, it's, even, I mean, it's like, and I'll catch myself doing it and I'll try to stop. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's a bad habit. It's bad. Yeah. Like, I think it's funny, so I'm, like, repeating it in my head or and it comes out, you know. Yeah. But anyway, go ahead. So circle back. Back, back to, to the topic, John. Yeah, back to the topic. All right. So that being said, <laughs> remainder of the um, RRCA once again, the number one thing that comes up on a Google search result. Okay, there's some there there are some good things in it that we we you know we need to uh, pay attention to, and, it, and it's decent. But and I'm gonna read through it, and then I'm gonna go through, and John and I are gonna dig just a little deeper because we are running low on time. Mm-hmm. And that is, you know, you do you do need to avoid dehydration. Yes. You in order in order, and I, we'll hit them in order, I guess, as we do it. In order to avoid dehydration, though, this whole you can lose six to 12 ounces of fluid for every 20 minutes. Okay. A rule of thumb like that is so hard because if you're running in 50 degree, I'm going to say perfect weather, it's different than if you're running in 
20 degree because the layers you can sweat more. And that's a big thing. People can get dehydrated in cold weather running just as easily because right. they're not thinking about the water consumption. Right. And then there's hot. The best thing to do is to do a sweat test. And the easiest way, and John, you can interject with some actual, if there, if you have numbers you prefer, mm -hmm. but it's simple. Step on a scale, go for a run, but don't consume anything, okay? But don't go for a four-hour run. Go for a half hour, go for an hour. The longer you can go, when I say without taking in anything, or if you do, take take your bottle with you. But you know, when you step on the scale pre-run, you know, hold your bottle with the water in it or your hydration pack with the water in it. So you have a total weight. And then at the end, you're going to have a separate, a different weight Weigh your, and what, I, and what I like to do too, though, is when I say weigh, in the beginning, you know, weigh yourself naked with your whatever. And at the end, weigh yourself naked with your whatever bottle of hydration pack, mm -hmm. because just because you may have two pounds of sweat on your shirt, it's not inside your body. You need to know how much you actually sweat, you know, your, your, your perspiration rate was in order to know how much of a deficit you're running. Correct. Anything to add on that, John? Or? No, that's exactly right. I would, I would say when, when you were saying, I said, well, make sure. I would have added, make sure you, you're doing it naked, naked, Yeah, you know, either yep. way, <laughs> both ways, because you got to get the sweat off your shirts. Yes. Go ahead. Um, the next one they say, and this is what John was getting into. I'm skipping the go to Gatorade's endurance one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to avoid running outside in heat above 98.6 mm -hmm. and above humid and humidity that's above 70 to 80% while running. And now the rest of it basically says is, Hey, humidity is going to make it hard for your sweat to evaporate. And that makes sense. So, Hey, if you're just going out for a run and it's just general training, fitness exercise, go, go when it's not hot go early, go late. And, and if it's today's just a really crummy humidity day and you can go tomorrow, go tomorrow. That being said, the training plan that I'm on is six days a week with one off day. You know what I mean? So I, you do what you can, but also uh, you guys have heard me say I'm training for Chicago. Chicago is supposed to be a hot race. So I'm trying to train hot in order to run cold. That being said, I'm not going at noon to two o'clock during the heat of the day when it's hundred degrees. I'm going at about the same time as the race. The yes. race is going to go off at 7 to 8 in the morning, so I need to train for what the heat's going to be like at that time of the day. You know what I mean? You, I'm going to train hotter, but I'm also going to try to train at the same time of the day, and, and that's just that's what I'm doing. What, what are they calling for temperatures there this year? It varies, but, I mean, that being said, is they, they say – I'm using air quotes because – it can be hot 60 to 90. That is a huge range. Yeah. You know, in the off years, yes, it can get up to 90 degrees, but a hot marathon is 70 to 80 degrees yeah. because most of them like to be in like the 50 to 60 range. Right. So that, that make for a difference. So that being said is if I go for a run when it's 75, 80, it's, that's about as hot as I can anticipate. It could get hotter, but then I know this is not a PR day. You know what I mean? If the temperature is right. 95 degrees, that's it. You know, I'm going to start a get walk around. Yeah, get early. to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Ne next tip, tool, track, uh, tactic, and this maybe needs to be repeated many, many, many times. Stop running. If you become dizzy, nauseated, chills, cease sweating, stop running. Find shade, get water. It, what, they, what you want to know here is the signs of heat stroke. It basically, if you've gone too hard and you and you're too into it, and then the other things they talk about, you know, hey, if you're having mental problems, confusion, delirium, or if you're unconscious, your skin's hot, you can't cool down. If you're like one of the things John pays attention when I'm out, and I he can track it, he can see when I start doing run walks. I just keep I, I less pay attention to my pace, I more pay attention to my heart rate. Right. And if my heart rate when I start walking, my heart rate comes down. If my heart rate doesn't come down, something's wrong. You know what I mean? And it's right. more important to survive to the next day. You don't want to – dying on a run is not worth – it's not going to get you to the next one. Take take it easy, you know, call, and, and, and know, know those signs. Well, I, and, uh, that, and part of that is like, you know, that's what comes with working with somebody for a long period of time. Like I've worked with you for a long time now. I know what your norm is. Mm -hmm. And when I look at numbers and I see something off that, I know something – okay, what's going on? Something happened, yeah. you know, I could tell immediately. Um, there's a couple others that are like that. I, I just, cause I know your norm is zero to 3%. Yeah. And a P8 HR. And it, when it's above that, I said, okay, it must've been a hot day. Something's going on. Yeah. Cause your heart rate was out of whack. Yep. 
Um, so it's it's so that that's I guess that's a another reason to find a coach and stick with them for a while because somebody else yeah. they know you really well and they, they yeah, don't know another your set of eyes looking at it and they know exactly right. like I, I I text you but before you even respond to my text you got a comment in my training peaks that right. says was it hot was it humid you yeah, know and something you what was going that. on there yeah yeah next tip we're circling back around on it mm. run in the shade when possible avoid direct sunlight and black top it holds the heat. It's going to radiate the heat back up to you. Okay. Um, you so know, when the trail get, running works great when, when it's like this, exactly. There's no heat on the ground there. Yeah. The next two, three things here. And I say it's pretty, they're all similar. It's a, you know, wear your sunscreen, protective eyewear. It says, consider a hat or a visor. Now, I look goofy in a visor because I got a really big forehead. That's a kind a, way of saying but I, I, I got a I got a receding hairline. I have a so, I have a secret for you though. Everybody looks goofy in visors. They just don't think <laughs> they look goofy. Yeah, right. <laughs> I say that because what I did on my one run the other week here, I, I wear my hat. I wear I, I I like I prefer the like I say a Brooks or a Nike the wicking hats. Okay, um, you know there's some brands that just fit people better those just fit me for comfort that said is i would generally wear it if i'm doing an out and back i'll wear it the whole way out and then when it start when i start getting really hot i will take it off and hold it in my hand when i'm running in the shade and when i get back into a sunny part so i, I might mm-hmm. put the hat on and take it off a dozen times across that 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 coming back section yeah I, Taking it off lets the heat out hats the reason why your mom always says wear a hat in the winter you lose most of the heat through your head but that's the same thing. You, you're if you're putting it, 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 it keeps it there as well. Yeah. So take it off, or you know that's why they say wear a visor. Mm-hmm. Just go ahead and, and you can wear a visor. Um, wear light colored, light colored, colored yeah. short sleeve clothing. Uh, you know, who's don't sponsor, they're, who's they're, sponsored they're, that. Uh, well, that that's why <laughs> there's that is in there, and I agree with you. If that's the number one tip, I, I pretty much found that it was sponsored by somebody. But it is fairly consistent, yeah. and you know they they do say obviously, and the, the the reason behind light colors, darker colors attract more heat. It's going to make you hotter. You know, white and or maybe like when I say a light gray, it reflects heat until you know until, uh, until Hot Topic starts uh, doing running clothes and then and pays for it, and then they'll be the number one thing on Google. Maybe who yeah. knows Hot Topic you running. Know, yeah, their their <laughs> last uh, the last tip on this one, you know, it does say um, plan your route so you can refill your water mm-hmm. your water bottles. Find fountains, city parks, local merchants, etc. You yeah. know what I mean? Or so that we can circle back. It, it's it's not you know, so go. You can really boil it down to like less than five things. Try to avoid the heat if you can. If you can't. Make sure that you are hydrating appropriately, you know, but you, in order to say it that way, you need to know what you're putting in and why you're putting it in. OK, mm-hmm. um, you know, wear light colored, loose fitting, because once again, if you're wearing really tight stuff, it, it, it's going to mess with your sweat rate and it's going to, you know, the compression it goes way back to what I said earlier about me feeling like I'm suffocating. If I'm wearing a compression top, it's going to make it harder to breathe. The harder it is to breathe, the harder it is to exhale out which is getting the heat out of your body but once again exhaling you're losing you're losing water you're losing you know you need to make sure you're replenishing that and replenishing it appropriately and then it's just cover up the best way you can you know whether it's the shirt whether it's shade whether it's sunscreen you know it's simple the longer you spend in the sun the hotter you're going to get and the more chance that eventually down the road you're going to get skin cancer so yeah great have fun with that, John. <laughs> so I think there was a lot of information in this show. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of complaining. <laughs> well, yeah. I can't always I can't always be the one ranting. You have to rant sometimes, you know. Yeah, you know. It's yeah. just one of those it it's I, I it's I don't want to steal other people's taglines and say it, but I, I I feel like a lot of us are doing a lot of this for what we think are the right reasons but when marketing continues to just beat something into your head over and over and over and over you think that it oh everybody knows this it must be right no just because everybody knows it doesn't make it right it just means that right you know it just mean you know what what's the saying like conventional wisdom doesn't doesn't make it right you know it's exactly just, so. it just means what's the the old uh the old and i'm not getting into politics but the old political saying is that if you say something over and over again, people start thinking it's true. Yeah. Whether it is or not. You know, so um, 
you know, that's, that's a tactic. And, and that's what it, that's what part of that marketing strategy is. If you put something in front of someone's face, every time they Google it, and that's the first thing they see, mm-hmm. um, people are going to believe that's, that's the case, you know, and, or you've been drinking, you know, hell, I grew up in Florida. That's what we had. This is where Gatorade is from. Yeah. You know, so when I, when I played football, we had Gatorade. Yeah. And it, that was serious Gatorade back then. That wasn't what they have now. It was Gatorade, you know, it was real. Yeah. Um, in the, uh, in the book I'm reading, the brave athlete that I'm still working through still, I highly recommend this book to everybody, but, um, as long as you can take a language, but, um, it, it talks about specifically, uh, kind of like, what was that? Uh, what was the slogan that you said for Gatorade right now? I've said a lot. I don't know. Oh, oh the, that far. I flip my pages over, uh, <laughs> Formulated for farther. Farm, formulated for farther. One of the sayings that they talk about that is like one of the most, one of the worst things you could tell somebody is to just do it. Because that's, that's, that's almost as disheartening as it is supposed to be, uh, you know, to push you forward. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes you just can't do it. And that's yeah. what you have to learn how to figure out. And if someone says, just do it. Yeah. You know, um, the, the small little thing on the Facebook was the same way. You know, when I, when I put out that post and it got quite the reaction, you know, there was inevitably somebody saying, well, you know, the best way to lose weight is to run. So you have to get out there and run and lose weight and then you'll feel, then it'll feel better. Well, yeah, we know that. But the problem is this is obviously somebody who's never been heavy. Yeah. Because it's easy to say that when you've never been heavy. <laughs> yep. They don't get that it hurts and what that feels like to run it. And we're not saying it's, you know, that there's anything wrong with being small or anything like that. I don't want it to come across like that. But until you run at 280 pounds, you don't know what that feels like. Right. So, you know, to tell somebody to just go run, that, that doesn't work like that, you know. Right. So, and, you know, I think it just comes back down to every – we have to be intelligent consumers. You know, we have to second guess everything, you know, always look at who's paying for it. Always assume that if it's the first thing that pops up on Google, they've paid for that. Yeah. You know, unless you, unless you uh, Google endurance for everyone and we pop up first, we have not paid for that, but no, but if somebody can get us there, please do. <laughs> I don't even know if we come up first. If you Google just endurance for everyone, I think we do actually. podcast John and Rob, you get, you get it restrictive enough. We might get up there. Just you just know, I, you know, I gotta, you know, I gotta Google it now, right? Just so I can see. Please do. I must circle <laughs> back to one thing that we didn't say. That's kind of when I say it's kind of important there, and, I, and that's when I, I should have put it in with the whole heat stroke type of thing, the whole hydration thing. No, guys, you need, you do need to drink. You do need to replenish what you're sweating out. Now that being said, is if you go for, and I'm using air quotes sort of to be funny here, okay. If you go for a super competitive three-hour 1K run, you don't need a gallon of Gatorade. Okay, that's what they're going to market you. That if you're, you know, that every, you need to just chug it at all turns. But if you're out there doing, speed is irrelevant. You know, if you're, but if you're doing, you know, four miles an hour, six miles an hour, ten miles an hour, and you're sweating and you're dripping and your and your shirt can be wrung out. Okay. You need to take in fluids. You should be taking them in while you're doing it. You can do some before. You can do some after. You're going to see what sits right with you. The other part behind that whole heat stroke thing is as you're losing, um, when you start getting dehydrated, when you're losing the fluid, your blood is going to start thickening because you're losing, you know, water and electrolytes and so forth from your blood. Your blood is like the radiator. It's, it's the radiator fluid in your car. It is what circulates stuff through to make things happen. So if it starts getting thicker, your body's going to start overheating on an exponential rate. The more you're dehydrated, the worse it's going to get. So right. you do need to pay attention. You do need to stay out ahead of it. My whole thing was not don't drink anything. It is just know what you're what you're taking in, you know, because you could drink when I say just plain, if you're only going, I'm using air quotes, only going for a half hour run, water's probably all you're going to need. You're going to replenish everything you lose with the foods that you're going to eat. But if you're trying to go for a two hour run or a five hour bike ride or something like that, you're going to need more 
But just because it's the number one search result on Google doesn't mean that it is the best thing for everybody. It just means they have the money to get in front of you. Right. And and we'll end with this. Uh, as I was saying, if you Google endurance for everyone on Google, uh, the number one hit is fatslowtriathlete.com. We know and that guy. Second is Endurance for Everyone podcast on Podbean. Then Endurance for Everyone by John Harris on Apple Podcasts. Endurance for Everyone trainers in Tampa. So it's a coaching thing. U- Endurance for Everyone USA Triathlon Club. Endurance for Everyone Stitcher. And then IT Support Company. <laughs> so I don't know. Interesting. That. And then the last one on the first page is Endurance for Everyone CrossFit Durham. Hmm. So Got apparently there's a, a call. Get them on. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that cross that uh, gets me about that is CrossFit is not an endurance sport. <laughs> That's a power sport. But um, nah, oh, I saw I saw a great I saw this year's uh, CrossFit Games on uh, it's on Netflix now that you can watch it. It's like, it was really interesting. But just throwing that out there, I watched it last night. I might have to uh, that, check it, that out. It was, really inter- it was really interesting. It was really interesting because the girl oh. that uh, the woman that got second last year barely got you know barely lost first place last year um was in it again and right to the end again her and that other australian her and another australian were right at the end of it like crossing the line almost at the same time that's how close it was (laughs) Uh, i might be doing some biking here soon uh put it on we'll save that whole topic for next week yeah and what and so forth but uh all right so uh that's it for this week um Come to the Facebook group. Uh, look us up, Team B for E, on all the social media sites. We're out there. If you can support us, go to podb.com, become a patron. Am I missing anything, Rob? We're coming up no, with some, that's We're, we're going to try to guys, design please, some hats. I said it on a solo group uh, when I was there last week all by my lonesome. Get us some reviews, please. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. doesn't does not take long. If you're using the Apple app, the, the Apple iTunes app, or whatever, you literally just have to, like, when I say scroll up, like go to the bottom and it's right there. It's it's just a couple clicks. It would really help us out to even, get out there. Yeah, even a few people. sentences. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be a book. Yeah. But yeah, get us some out there. So, and I, I tried to put it in last week and I think I messed it up, but I liked when you used to say it, John. I'm going to sk- try it again here, just cold without uh, practicing. And that is, hey, you know, endurance is for everyone. This is the Endurance for Everyone podcast. Have a great week, guys. Thanks for listening to the Endurance for Everyone podcast. If you have comments or questions for the show, send an email to teame4e at enduranceforeveryone.com. And remember, swim calm, bike strong, and run steady.